Hi, this is Carl the Cobra Frutch, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Law, and I'm here at the iconic boxing club, the Rotunda Boxing Club in Liverpool, the greatest city in the world. Delighted to be joined by boxing trainer Joe McNally. Joe, good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm good, Fess. Yeah, nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, likewise, thank you very much for taking your time out to speak to me. Um, just watched the, spar the, the sparring, the, the gym session, Callum and Liam both look in good shape, um, but let's talk, start off talking about Liam was scheduled to take on Chris Eubank Jr. last weekend, but the injury has, you know, stopped that fight from happening. So what can you tell us about how Liam's doing now in terms of the injury and when we can expect to see that fight with Eubank Jr. be rescheduled? Yeah, well, you know, Liam's utter and truly started camp. Uh, coming off the injury he had, it was a, we had to get the go-ahead off his, off his uh, doctor and, and physiotherapist that was, you know, giving, him, giving Liam the all clear to to resume his training and really get to work <clears throat> you know under what I'm led to believe is you know it things are nearly over the line and we're working towards the first week of September um, as you've seen today you know he's, he's he's working away he's grafting away to get himself into the condition and shape that you know needs to be so to to take Chris Eubank to school once again and you know yeah he's, he's looking good I mean, yeah, he put out a phenomenal performance in the first fight and he done what no other opponent has been able to do and that stopped Chris Eubank Jr. in emphatic fashion. Um, I just want to obviously get your thoughts on, you know, sort of the build-up to that fight and what you've seen after that fight in terms of Liam and Chris coming to head-to-head -to -head in press conferences and what you've seen on social media. Do you believe that they've shown enough respect to Liam considering the fact that Liam is a former world champion and he's lo only lost to great fighters? Do you, do you feel as if they've shown enough respect and you believe that they do respect him now especially what went down after the first fight yeah you know me consensus on all the social media stuff and the build up look I'm a big fan of Chris and you know he, he, he sells himself really well you know he is like Marmite a lot of people hate him a lot of people love him um, you know it's just part of, the, of his business side and his make up how he sells himself to the fights regarding respect for Liam you know he'd be a fool not to I think every fighter in the sport of boxing will respect Liam Smith, um, you know, <clears throat> not only what he's achieved, what he's capable of and what his talent beholds, but, you know, the, all, all the social media shite and stuff like that doesn't really interest me. Um, you know, Liam can give as good as he takes and on any platform, but, you know, I think after the fight, Chris will have come away with a newfound respect for Liam. Um, I'm not buying into all the elbow um, talk and stuff like that. It's just a load of crap, really, and, you know, I'm assuming that he's training utter hard, as hard as Liam will be, to try and correct his, his mistakes and, you know, come away with a victory, which we're working towards and, you know, we will get. Um, you know, I think Liam is underappreciated of the non-boxing fans where they buy a lot of Chris's makeup and build up and Liam's absolutely not on and he's this superstar and non-boxing people are oh big mouths he knocked him out of George Groves couldn't do this that but look stars make fights and you know Liam Smith's got the beating of Chris Eubank which I believe he got in the first time and he'll win again it, it wasn't a shock to to true boxing hardcore people to be honest they come a little bit earlier than I anticipated um, I know Chris has got fantastic whiskers. I didn't expect him to knock him clean out the way he did. Um, but the truth of it is, anyone with them small gloves on, you get it on the on the right spot, um, you can go to sleep. Right, just moving on. So obviously that rematch hasn't formally been announced yet and there's a lot of people talking about Chris taking on Conor Ben in a, in a potential fight. But do you expect that to be the next fight for Liam? And if not, are you looking at the Munguias, the Golovkins, anyone else in that division? Yeah, you know, the, the truth of it is the stage of his career, the world titles are sewn up with Charlo. Um, I'm led to believe off Liam and his management himself. It's not in my position to, you know, I've just got a time schedule which I'm happy with to work, work with him with X amount of weeks for him to get him in the correct shape he's getting in on of his management, I'm working towards Chris. If Chris is talking to Connor, then I understand it. You know, there's a lot of money involved and the business side, you know, for Chris, it'll make a lot more sense to fight Connor. 
on the flip side, you know, his his ego is 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 niggle the needle, and he he needs to, that itch. He needs to scratch that itch to get to get one over on Liam. So, you know, it's it's I don't know where Chris's mindset is with it, but I'm led to if he doesn't get to fight Chris, I love Kel Brook. I really love. He was the mandatory for the WBC for Charlo. If Charlo gets stripped of them titles because he's fighting Canelo for one way or the other, you know, it could be a, a Tim Tazu for a crack at the vacant title. It could be any. But I love Kel Brook, you know. Um, it's a massive, massive fight for the UK. I think it sells out any stadium, specifically up no, more up north than anything. And, you know, I think business wise, it's a fantastic move for Liam. And then, you know, maybe if he didn't get the Eubank fight, the Ben Eubank fight, the winner of that. And, Either scratch Eubanks it or get rid of Connor in the same fashion he's done Chris Eubank in. Okay, well, we hope at some point we do get to sort of know what's going on next with Liam and Chris. But yeah, um, just moving forward, we've got an absolute barnstorm of a fight to look forward to as Callum Smith takes on uh, Art Better Beer, you know. And when I speak about this fight, I say, do you know what? Both powerful fighters, both great fighters. I, I can't see this fight going the distance. But uh, firstly, Callum, I mean, how, how are you? In terms of his preparation for this fight, are you happy? And yeah, do you believe that Callum's going to be the man that does take away Art's O? And do you believe he also has what it takes to stop him inside the distance? Yeah, well, you know, obviously Callum, um, I just like to notify before I carry on is I'm not Callum's coach. That I know, know, but you've worked yeah. closely with him. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very close to Callum on a, on a personal level. He's family to me, and he's been working away really hard with Buddy McGate over in the states and. He's come back. Uh, Buddy isn't here for he, he hasn't been here for a few days, so obviously, you know, I'm not going to leave Callum un, unattended in the gym before Buddy gets here uh, tomorrow. But you know, Callum looks in fantastic condition. Um, he's been sparring today, helping a couple of my fighters out too, keeping his eye in um, <clears throat> before he really takes off with his hard sparring. And you know, I, I really fancy if there's a right time to get Berbatiev, it's, it's it's now. I believe he's had a, a long, long amateur career. Um, he's just showing, for me, a little bit of vulnerabilities that he didn't have earlier on in, in his career. And if Callum's on point and follows the right tactics with Buddy McGate, I think he pulls off for um, one of the upsets. Uh, 2023 in my mind not really an upset it's a genuine 50 50 fight and i think if callum smith shows up he comes away the unified champion of the world at light heavyweight i know you've been keeping an eye on him um because i know you're pretty close with buddy mcgurt as well yeah. was working with callum so you know you've been involved in the boxing world a very very long time so yeah how do you set up for a fighter that's just knocked everybody out in his way even when he's shown vulnerabilities he's been put on the floor He's still got what it takes to get up and finish the fight inside the distance. So how do you think, you know, when you look at it, how do you set up a fighter for that type of an opponent? For Bebetiev? Yeah. Well, you know, like any opponent, you know, you'll, you'll capitalise on his weaknesses and work as hard as you can to nullify his strength. Regarding the knockouts and, and getting dropped and getting up and stopping people, you know, from a coach's point of view, you don't really want to work. They all say, you know, you know we, we love knockouts, yeah. yeah. Knockouts come when you don't least expect them. You know, most of them are with perfect time and, and you know, reaction and speed. You know, it, it, it isn't the genuine just power to them. Because if you can see them coming 99% of the time, you, they're not going to get you out of there if you see it coming. So, you know, I'm a sh like any coach who's worth his salt will tell you, you know, they'll be working on the on the weaknesses of BBTF and trying to neutralise his strengths and implementing your own strategy and game plan and you know I truly believe Buddy and Callum will come up with the perfect strategy and game plan to you know nullify uh, BBTF and make them fight their fight and come away with the victory. Okay just moving on a guy that you do know well and a guy that you do look after yeah. Josh Taylor uh, it's been a few weeks since the defeat to Teofimo Lopez but have you spoken to Josh is there any sort of sign of what's potentially next with Josh? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm absolutely devastated. He come away with the with the loss to Tiafimo. There's no no um, there's no shame in losing to Tiafimo Lopez. Um, I believe it was a fight that I was massively confident in. There's things we need to we need to discuss moving forward and things that you know rectifying can be. 
I'm kicking myself a little bit because he was in fantastic condition, Josh. It was a no weight issue. Uh, we couldn't do no road work for, for the camp. It's not an excuse, but it's one of rare. I'm kicking myself as a coach, like ah, we could have postponed it a little bit, you know. And this, but look, he was boxing to orders the first the first quarter of the fight and making it look easy. I truly believe T.O. didn't adjust. It was sort of Josh stopped doing what he was doing. He is. He weren't really blowing Josh, his body was tired and, you know, Tio just looked like he was manhandling him out the fight a little bit and, and Josh's body strength. Do I think it was the weight? Um, no, certain aspects we've got to discuss, but, you know, moving forward with Josh, as I've stated to him and talked to him, he's, a, he's, a unbelie- he's a really an elite level fighter and there's a pocket of them in this division, you know, yeah. Coming off losses, you've got Lomachenko, you've got Josh Taylor, you've got Adrian Broner coming back, Jorge Renares there, and then you've still got T.O. himself, you've got Devin Haney up there, you know, your Devon Ryan Garcia is there. It's a really good mix. You've got the IBF champion that um, no one wants no part of, Mateus. Um, you've got the Jack Catterell kid, um, you know, they're, they're, they're all in a mix, and he's in a really little golden area, you know, and I'd like him to, you know, sort of come back to the fight. He, he hasn't had no easy options to, for, you know, years and years. Maybe come back, have, have a catch weight fight around 143, see how he feels at, at that weight. I don't really want him to jump up full to 147. Um, I think it's a it's a big jump. So he's, he, he is in a position where he can have a little catch weight one and have a comeback fight, see how he feels, try and rectify a few things we need to discuss in the gym. Um, and you know what? For once in his career, the pressure off him, uh, uh, you know, he, he's lost, he is no pressure now. And really enjoy his work to another level. Work on adding more tools in his toolbox, rectifying things and, and let's get, get let's get his ass back into the big fight and you know, go and go from there really, yeah. One thing that uh, we obviously touched on at the start at the starting point of the interview is obviously social media it plays a massive yeah. part of any type of sports or just you know the whole world for a matter but you know there are a lot of people that say well you know it didn't look good against Jack Cat really didn't look good against uh, Teofimo Lopez you know, this is a former undisputed champion of the world this is a guy that's been in great fights over the years do you feel as if that the public need to sort of maybe cut him some slack and look at the positives rather, rather than the negatives because it's the most difficult sport in the world Teofimo Lopez is a great fighter yeah. do you think we need to be sort of People need to be saluting what Josh has done and rather praising him and then, you know, sort of slating him throughout the media and throughout the, the whole social media world. Yeah, you know what? I, I do. That's why, you know, the Twitter platform, Facebook platform, this, that. I only use Instagram myself and only for... Life must be so much more easier for you, John. Yeah, because it's a load of bullshit and the people that, you know, I've emphasised this to Josh, obviously the stick he got mostly from south of the border, the English and, and armchair fans was Catterell, Catterell, you duck, you duck, you this, you that. Listen, no fighter ducks, no one. And it's a bit harsh. It's not his fault that the controversy went on with Jack Catterell and the shit he got. It bothers Josh a lot because he's that type of person, you know, he's really hot-headed. And I'm like, look, champ, 99% of these fucking bums on, on, on the platforms, when they see you, the first thing they'll do is, can I have a picture, please? But then they'll, they'll sit on their house with with the, with the phones in their hand. Like, everyone's like zombies now, aren't they? And they're sitting here, the, the, the thumbs are going, and they're giving them a bit of shit, you know. And I think if it gets you that way, just stay off the platforms. Give it to someone to run it for you. And don't ever, you know, pay it any attention. That's my philosophy. Call it old school, call it a boring cunt, whatever. But if you cannot go like I've got Liam Smith on the other matter no matter what people say or what they do it's water off a duck's back but some people are different and with Josh I think it's best staying off that because some of the stuff he receive, he receives it's it's people rather don't know boxing or jealousy it's one or the other and what he has achieved in the sport up to now and in my sense you know what I see in the gym he's, un- he's unbelievable and as much as they say he was shit against him, shit, you know, he was poor against T.O. Okay, well, he was poor. One more round, it was a split draw. You know, he won rounds for me. And correct me if I'm wrong, but one, two, three, eight, and ten. Without really doing nothing, there's five rounds. So maybe the fight could have come one too early for us. We should have had one together before that. But look, hindsight's a, a funny old thing. And 
I think if Josh performed on the night, he must probably could have stopped Tiafimo Lopez. If not, won a unanimous decision. And that, that's my opinion on it. I'm doing nothing and not showing up. He still took five rounds out the fight. And that's a fact, is it not? Yeah, I agree so. Um, and it, it's going to be interesting to see what Josh does next. You said you'd like him to maybe 143. There's people saying go up to 147. But nonetheless, we've got a fantastic fighter from the UK, former undisputed champion. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be big fights yeah. out there for him. Um, just uh, a few more before I do let you go. The heavyweight division has taken a bit of a... Uh, See you later, Ash. See you later, champ. It's taken a lot of um, criticism over the last few weeks, but, you know, positive light. We've got two big fights announced yesterday. Joshua White rematch and, of course, Daniel Dubois, Alexander Usyk. Um, yeah, thoughts on the rematch. Can Dillian White make it 1-1 or do you think Anthony Joshua's just got too much for him and do you expect Joshua to come away and go 2-0 up and then move on to a, a huge fight with Johnny Wilder? Yeah, it's, it's a funny one, you know. I think I'm like the rest of the... The boxing fraternity in a sense that I'm a little bit disappointed in the Joshua White um, rematch. I don't think Dillian White warrants it. Um, Joshua is a fantastic champion. Um, and Usk, Wilder, Tyson Fury, Joshua, they should be having a round robin and all fighting each other. They're in a little golden bubble and it's not getting utilised and taken advantage of. So I'd really love to see them all having a dust up with each other and, you know, putting putting the balls on the line and, and you know, going out and having a fight and give the sport a box and the fights it deserves. You know, no disrespect to Dillian, but, you know, his, his performance against Jermaine Franklin wasn't the best. Um, you know, Joshua would be Franklin a lot more convincingly in, in my eyes, I believe he should have. And I don't know, it's a bit of injustice for the heavyweight division for me, you know. Maybe Dillian should have fought Andy Ruiz or something like that and then let the yeah, it's a good fight and let the others crack on with, with each other. Um, but you know, politics in, in, in the sport again, it's it's a funny old thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Daniel Dubois, an absolute powerhouse. Alexander Usyk, a masterclass, technically good in the ring, footwork amazing, headwork amazing, you know, former undisputed champion at cruiserweight, one belt away from being an undisputed champion at heavyweight, you know, great um, amateur background. So, <laughs> what's the, Don Charles? This is their first fight together yeah. since uh, Daniel's moved away from the McGuigan's gym. It's a, it's a tough task for Don Charles. I mean, would you have maybe have liked to have seen him take a fight before U6 so he could go, sort of get a, an idea of how each other work? Or do you think, no, if an opportunity like this comes, it's too hard to turn down? Yeah, far as well. It's first and foremost for me, you know, uh, the athlete Usk is. Um, you know, I don't think the size is going to be a problem, yeah, as he's shown against Joshua. And, you know, the strength isn't going to be a problem, the bullish type of tactics, because he's proven that way. Tajora, uh, you know, Usk is Usk, he's a fantastic talent. Um, I, you've just notified me there, I've took no attention really on Daniel Dubois, on who he's moved from, from the McGuigans. It sort of falls in the consensus, uh, myself with Josh Taylor, in hindsight, should they have had one more fight? I mean, looking now, maybe so. Um, what I was seeing in the gym, we didn't really need to, but, you know, I think he should have stayed with the with Shane McGuigan for, on my personal point of view, like, I think Shane had him boxing really well. Obviously, he, he had that little one, I think it was his knee or something, he, he, he went down on, but I don't think he should have left Shane, really. I don't know what the logistics are behind that, but, you know, he's, he's had a few fights under Shane, and in my opinion, was looking really good, and... I think he should have stayed, stayed with Shane, to be honest with you. And I think it's a really live fight too, in a sense that I think it'd be a lot tougher if Dubois shows up and you know puts a performance. And I think Usk's in deep because one thing you know he's technically sound. Dubois, he's young, he's athletic, he, he can punch like a motherfucker. But I just think he, you know, I think he should have stayed with the McGuigans, yeah, definitely. Okay, one final one because I don't want to keep you for too long. Um, two fighters that Josh could maybe you know get in the ring with one day, do fight for all the marbles in the undisputed uh, welterweight championship of the world. Yeah. Errol Spence Jr., Terence Crawford. I've asked this question to so many people throughout the last three to three weeks or so. But yeah, who's leaving Vegas as a rich man and as the king of the 147 division, Joe? It's it, well. You it's, gonna be there, Joe? It's, I'm not gonna be there, and I'm too busy in the gym. If you was, I would have tried robbing your ticket. Yeah, yeah, I'm not there, mate. Unfortunately, but you know, I can remember watching Spence. 
years and years ago on a Thursday night show in Vegas. Um, I forgot what Mayweather fight it was at, and there was a lot of you know talk about him. Then he was he was a prospect then, he? and I can remember watching him. I think it was against Juan uh, uh, Juan Diaz. So, oh, I can't mean I can't remember. It was against a, a Latin kid, and he um, he didn't really impress me up close when I seen him. He was very fundamentally solid. Um, bit of a winky right type of style going on, you know, sort of nice tight guard, good jab, done the fundamentals, fantastic. And he boxed well, but not one where I really went, wow, he's going to be a superstar and this, that and the other. And I still think that way now. I think he's a fantastic fighter, good athlete. He's got a good team behind him and I think he's fundamentally solid, strong, come forward. On the other hand, you've got, you know, the first time I laid eyes on Sevens Crawford was the Ricky Burns fight. Uh, and he sort of come in of an underdog, and I, I was like, wow, this kid, this kid shit hot, and um, ever since that, he's just got better and better and better. I think he's got got a lot more tools in his box than, than Spence, but you know what? Solid fundamentals and things which Spence has got, they take it a long way, which is proven, and um, it's a 50-50 fight. If it was to bet me house on it, you know, I'd go with Crawford. Um, haven't but look, things happen, fights happen in boxing. It's who shows up on the night. The small percentages for me are going to count in this down to the preparation, down to how you've been firing in the gym. And at that elite level, them where it's that evenly matched, it's them little tiny percentages that get you the win. So, but look, the safe man's better. My thing is, I go with Crawford, yeah. To come away. One, one final one, you're a Liverpool fan, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> right, so Bosley, McAllister through the door. You're confident we get Champions League football next season and maybe, maybe win some silverware as well? Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna Faz, I'm not gonna stand here and lie on the camera because I don't really follow the football that but much. Come on, you live yeah. in the city though, you this, must read I, a thing or two. Any of these are tell you, you know, look, I've been boxing through and through since I was, you know, a, 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 a baby and all I really know is boxing. I, I don't even know most of the players on the Liverpool team. Not a folk ask me anything about boxing, but these all I say is whatever they do, these can all tell you about Liverpool. But yeah, you know, I couldn't tell you, Fair mate. Okay, yeah. okay, right. I'll pick your football brains hopefully next yeah. time I pop down. Right, Joe, before I let you go, brother, yeah. anything else you'd like to add? No, you know, just obviously, you know, me other fighters, just keep an eye out for them, especially me two young prospects, uh, Jack Turner fighting on the 22nd of this month in Dubai. He's with the um, Cuban fighters, uh, people fighters, Cuban boxing team and young Frankie Stringer. You know, he's um, 5 and 0 now. He's managed off Liam Smith. He'll be on the undercard of Liam's next fight. You know, two fantastic kids along with, you know, it, um, another fantastic uh, camper fighters. Just keep an eye out for them two young lads though, definitely. Well, we will do well. Hopefully yeah. we'll communicate over social media and again, I'll pop down and I'd love to chat anytime, to him. Anytime. Top God man. Bless, Joel pleasure. McNally, no, my pleasure. Thank you very much, yeah. mate, for your time and thank you for talking to Lights Out. Thanks, one, mate. Good man. Thank you.